Hey guys, ANY here, and according to this post, you guys are interested in seeing me react to more stuff than only MLP episodes. And to answer one question right at the beginning, because people are probably going to ask me otherwise in the comment section, no, I will not react to your video. At least not in general. I'm not going to start recording myself whenever I watch a video on YouTube and I only do this for people I already kind of know that I will have a more or less strong reaction. Uh, this particular comment uh, was from a video by Give and Take, if I remember correctly. Well, this first reaction video will not be on a video by Give and Take, but on MLP Silver Squill, another one of my current favorite uh, MLP analysts uh, because he has this very unique and comedic spin on all his videos and he is one of the guys I usually have a strong reaction to. Yeah, let's check his MLP after the fact on Philip and Ilya out. Fluttershy, my fave. Congratulations on expressing your love of singing. As a sign of our enjoyment, me and the boys put together a little number for you. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't go as expected, probably because somebody was off key. <laughs> We begin with an opening so saccharine that I think it gave me diabetes. Fluttershy greets the day with her animal friends with a melody that would give Snow White an inferiority complex. And the premise is quickly established as Fluttershy has an unintended audience. Wow, I've never heard you sing a solo like that before. This was a teaser clip before the episode's release, and a lot of fans pointed out that Fluttershy has sung plenty of times. What we might not have been aware of was the term non-diegetic. Thank you, give and take. Uh, where's the rest of you? Traditionally, musical numbers are for the benefit of the audience and don't impact the show's storyline. They can help abridge long sequences and provide a fun show, yet the characters wouldn't be any more aware of it than they would the show's narration or soundtrack. So I'd accept that Fluttershy has never literally sung for her friends before, if not for... Should we sing about it again? Or... Besides, I can't take any more singing. However, there's enough difference here that this doesn't derail the plot for me. This is Fluttershy singing as if no one's there, with all her heart. And that passion is why she's my favorite. Fluttershy has a lot of strong feelings that she keeps hmm. hidden, and that goes for talents as well. Her knowledge of sewing, her natural grace, and now her love of music. I hear fans when they say that they dislike Fluttershy because she encounters the same obstacle every time. Yet, I find this endearing as it's very believable. When we face a personal obstacle in real life, it doesn't go away after one triumph. Some of our deepest personality quirks are issues we contend with every day. And with Fluttershy being so timid, I would be surprised if she didn't suffer social anxiety. I'm not watching MLP Silver Quill for serious stuff. Why are the jokes? Like performing in front of thousands of ponies in the Equestria games. I'm just saying. Anyway, Rarity wants to make Fluttershy a member of her acapella group, which includes Big Mac and two ponies that I've never seen before and never learned their names. And Pinky has her own group. They have names? And then, when you choke, they'll turn it on you because of the seed in every mob, and you'll be horribly humiliated, and you're never able to show your face in party battle again! What? What was that? I'll tell you what. Karma, for this little event... Just because you failed the song of Bloomberg a hundred thousand times in practice, doesn't mean you won't be able to do it in front of an entire stadium full of impatient, super-critical sports fan ponies. Huh. He has a nice okay, point. The universe is a little more balanced. That's enough. We get a little huh. development for both Fluttershy and Rarity as Fluttershy asserts that, while she enjoys the pony tones, she has no intention of getting up and singing in front of a crowd. And Rarity respects this. It's a nice change on both parts from way back in Green Is In Your Color. Speaking of development, Big Macintosh is singing. Bum, 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 ba -da -ba -da -da -bum. I'm even more surprised to see him singing than I would Fluttershy. Up until now, he seemed relatively separate from town events. And we see just how much their music inspires Fluttershy to shake her flank. I knew you would do something about it. I mean, this episode invited to it, when but... When Macintosh loses his voice, thanks to Pinky, uh, Fluttershy has the idea to go see Zakura and not the local hospital. Must be an HMO hospital. Problem is, Big Mac won't be ready for the evening performance. So Zakura pulls the best continuity callback this season and whips up a poison joke potion that gives us the return of Flutter Guy. 
And once they arranged a fake Big Mac scene... Which was, by the way, planned as the title of this episode at some point. Snap a photo, and boom, new background. Turns out Flutter Guy is actually better than Big Macintosh. Cheerilee is going to have one heck of an identity crisis after this. Yet after one performance comes invite after invite, and Fluttershy claims she doesn't want to disappoint any pony, and her enthusiasm grows with each event. And I really relate to Fluttershy because, here's a secret, I still feel nervous whenever I upload a new video or post a comic. You this don't have to, Quill, really, Fluttershy don't. Fluttershy singing and, say, competing in sports. Singing is Fluttershy's personal expression, and I identify with her... I mean... I put videos like this up without shame, so, and you put actual effort in yours, so please don't feel in any way uh, afraid of retaliation for your videos. Continue being awesome. Hesitation. I think any writer, artist, musician, dancer, and athlete will agree that putting forth your best work and having it rejected can be crippling to your mood and confidence. And seeing people delight in your self-expression is one of the most satisfying feelings. So I don't have an issue with Fluttershy's stage fright, and I really enjoy seeing her love singing so much that she blows her own cover. And while Fluttershy is too busy freaking out to hear the applause, at least she's got her friends. <laughs> Pinky, what are you? You kind of sounded like a dude. <laughs> Stop it, Pinky! I'm starting to. What is happening with the background? I don't get it yet. Oh no, Pinkie Pie is unlikable. Universe well, has been that's broken. Just Peachy. Pinky became unlikable, and the universe broke. Because while fans always have the option to like or not like a character, there are moments where a character can be completely unlikable. And Pinky has been responsible for 90% of the external conflict this episode, which can make it pretty hard to like her, even though her moments weren't out of character. I mean it, she has a history of getting so caught up in the excitement that she forgets how to read the room and says just the wrong thing. Oftentimes she doesn't realize that she's hurting some pony's feelings. If she did, I know she'd be heartbroken. Unlike those past episodes, however, Pinky doesn't help contribute to the solution, so there's not a lot to pull her back into a positive light. I think this could have been avoided if the writers didn't overplay her bit. The first freak out floating in space, a little over but... the top. Then it could have been Fluttershy who <laughs> internalized the idea and sabotaged herself. No need to have Pinky drive her to tears again and again. Now, I need to figure out how to balance things out here. Turkey cock? Uh, yep. Treasure voice? Yep. Zakoa remedy? Uh, yep. No quick enough? No. Need a deep voice? Uh, yep. Poison joke? Yep. Flutter guy? Uh, yep. Better name? Yep. And that chat Philly was living her dream in the shadows because she couldn't bring herself to come into the spotlight? Uh, yep. You know, I can see most of their conversations going that way. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> While Pinky's not at her best, the others are in top forms that try to support Fluttershy, and Rarity shines at her turn as mentor. You lived your worst nightmare! Was it really that bad? Funny thing about the fears we imagine, they're often worse than reality. And so Fluttershy takes her first steps towards the spotlight as she sings for her friends. Admittedly, I was disappointed she wasn't singing for a larger audience, yet it makes sense for her to take baby steps. It also opens the door for follow-up episodes, something I greatly enjoy. All in all, this is an episode with great music, great callbacks, a character that people can relate to, and several morals. Of course, a lot of this hinges on how much the viewer relates to Fluttershy. Thankfully, the main cast and some of the supporting characters shine in their own roles. The only weak point is Pinky, and while I still enjoy her character, I hope the writers won't overplay her quirks as much in the future. Speaking of which, I haven't seen Pinky since the universe fixed itself. <laughs> eh, she'll be back. In the meantime, we've got to get ready to sing for Celestia's next ball. <laughs> what does she mean, I'm tone deaf? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. This is some epic fan art. My, my. Well, um, that was me reacting to stuff. Um, now how about producing some stuff? <laughs> uh, see you guys soon.